Hi book friends and welcome to the mid-year book tag. I collected almost 20 questions from other booktubers and book blogs and we're just gonna get into them right away because it is already unbelievably the middle of the year and I've read many books so far and I have opinions so let's get into it. The first question is how many books have you read this year and let me just pull up Goodreads. I have read 41 books so far. Next question I need Goodreads for that too is how many five star reads have you had this year? I like to think that I'm very picky with my five star reads but apparently I'm not because out of the books that I've read 15 were five star books. Let's get into the actual books that I've read. I'm gonna try not to repeat myself too much. I'm gonna limit myself to maximum three books per question so that a lot of my books are gonna be in here but also we're not gonna have the same ones for every question. The next question is the best book that I've read so far and I have two. As I've mentioned all of my favorite books are in this basically but this one is one of my absolute favorites, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I was very surprised that I liked this so much. It's like a dark fantasy set in Yale and it's very interesting and I very much enjoyed it. I bought it for the cover there's also a sequel. I think there's a third part coming out, which I'm very excited for. But this one's definitely one of my top favorites of the year. Then we have Daisy Jones and the Six. This one's actually a four-star book, like just the book as a standalone. But I am obsessed with this whole universe, like the music and the TV show and just everything around it. So that it has to be included in one of the best books so far. Best sequel of the year has to be Yours Truly. This is from the Part of Your World series by Abby Jimenez. I am obsessed with this book. I love the anxiety representation in this. Um, I am obsessed with the male main character actually both of the main characters a very very good book very emotional but also very fun and good and i just love this one very much next up we have new releases that i want to read and i have a couple here because i bought a lot of books and i want to read them all um let's start out with a series we have done it dusted and swift and saddled there is a third part coming out i don't remember the name um but this one's a new release to me i think this one came out this year so i obviously have to read the first part too but i'm very excited to get into this series because it's something different for me and i'm very excited to see how i like it we have the Dalek or Dream Department Store. This cover just spoke to me and it just sounds very interesting. The subtext is the dream you ordered is sold out and I thought that was that was intriguing to me so I really want to read this. And then we have the Book of Doors. Again I bought this mainly for the cover. This is fiction. I don't know what it's about honestly because there is just like praise on the back of it but it just I don't know it just seems interesting to me so I got it and I definitely want to read it this year. And then we have the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I am dying to get my hands on Fitzek's new book. I'll put a picture up. My sister and I are actually going to the like book tour thing because he's one of my favorite crime authors. I think the book's available in a lot of other languages than German. He just writes very twisted thrillers and I never see the plot twists coming and this one's his new one. I got a like special edition. I think it should come out in like October and I'm very very excited for that one. Next up we have books that surprised me. A book that I read recently that surprised me is Agatar. It shouldn't be surprising honestly but I was just surprised with how much I love this book. Obviously everybody else else likes it. There are a lot of people that think it's bad but I really really enjoyed it and I kind of regret waiting that long to finally pick it up and I'm very excited for the other parts and where the story goes. Another book that surprised me was Good Material by Dolly Elderton. I really like Dolly Elderton's Everything I Know About Love and then I got Ghosts or Ghosts and I DNF'd that and then I got this one because of the cover again and because I wanted to give her fiction books another try and I am obsessed with this one. It's a five star read. It's from a male main character's perspective which I never really read unless it's like the second perspective in a romance and that was also like an interesting concept that I've never read before and I just really really enjoyed this and I would highly recommend it. Then we have the biggest disappointments. I actually have two. First up, never thought I'd say this but this Stephen King book, Billy Summers, it really disappointed me. It might be my fault because I thought it was going to be something different than what it actually was because this is not like thriller, horror, anything. A lot of people love this but I just, I don't know, I just can't. I have very different expectations for this one and I just didn't meet them so sadly I was disappointed. And then another Another surprising disappointment is A Touch of Darkness. I love Greek mythology. This one is Hades and Persephone and I thought I would eat this up. I thought I would love this so much. The setting is promising but then the dialogues and the two characters actually interacting with each other I just did not vibe with at all sadly. I wanted to love it but I just could not so I also DNF this. Then we have some new authors that I discovered this year. I limited it down to two. One of my new discoveries has to be Abby Jimenez. I am obsessed with her Part of Your World series. This one's the third part. This one I think might be my favorite. I just really love her writing style and she doesn't just write like a light fluffy like fun romance. There's always some either friendships or family like issues involved that are just really interesting to me and they make me cry every single time um, so I obviously love her. And then another author that I discovered this year is Crystal Sutherland. I have the invocation and also House of Hollow. I love the way that she describes like each scene. The books overall I think were both three stars to me but the way she writes is just amazing and I like she 
she's so descriptive, but it's never boring. It's just so interesting to me. So I really, really like Crystal Sutherland's writing as well. The newest fictional crush, gotta pull up just for the summer again, Justin in Just for the Summer. The definition of if he wanted to, he would, and he's just so sweet. And then the little things he does, like the surveys before the dates, I am obsessed with him. I love him so much. 10 out of 10 for this book and for Justin. Books that made me cry, number one has to be Me Before You. I almost sobbed on the train reading this one, so that should tell you how sad this is. I don't think there's any spoilers with this book because it is a little bit older and there's also a movie out, so I think a lot of people notice. But you keep hoping that it turns out different than it actually turns out while knowing that it's not gonna turn out different and that just broke my heart because I just really felt with both of the main characters and I just had to stop with this one. Another a little bit lighter book that made me cry was Book Lovers because Emily Henry also always intertwines like family issues in there and there was this one scene with Charlie's dad so the main main character's dad that was just very emotional for me and I also had to cry. Books that made me happy were a little bit difficult to find because a lot of the books are either like fantasies and they don't like make me happy I just enjoy them and the romance usually don't make me happy too I'm just happy for them that they're together and everything um, but I usually cry in the process but a book that I actually laughed at was Big so is. This one's about two women and a therapist and the therapist kind of connects them because one of them is one of the therapist's patients and the other one is his transcriber and the therapist says things that are so stupid that I just had to laugh honestly. It is a, a little bit tragic honestly and it's very weird and it is a fiction book so it's not a romance or anything at all and it didn't make me happy in the sense that I was like happy for the characters but it did make me laugh because some of the things the therapist says are just outright stupid. <laughs> Books to read by the end of the year obviously I have a long TBR. I want to read basically all of the books that I buy, but that's not possible. So I limited myself down to three, as I've mentioned. First up, we have Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. This is the last book of hers that I have at home, and I really want to get into this because I really enjoy her writing style. A book that I want to read very soon in the summer is Every Summer After. I love the cover and I've heard good things, so I'm very interested to see where this goes and if I enjoy it as well. And then we have How to End a Love Story. This title and the description sound very interesting to me. I think that this is gonna kind of destroy me emotionally, to be honest but I'm very interested to see where it goes. I'm hoping to start this very soon. Books I've been putting off. I also limited myself to three and coincidentally I actually DNF'd three books over the years so far. First up we have Time Shelter. I didn't officially DNF this yet. I'm stuck at about halfway. This is about two doctors, psychologists, whatever, and they build a town for people who suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's and they set it in the 70s so that the people kind of connect to their past and can access their memories. It's just a very interesting concept. It's written a little bit complicated and and it's just difficult to read for me to be honest but the concept is really interesting and I'm hoping that I can still finish this this year. A book I recently <laughs> sadly had to DNF is When in Rome. I accidentally got this in German and the German dialogue in this is the cringiest thing I have ever read so I think I'm gonna get this in English and probably enjoy it because the setting is promising. These two characters are supposed to be kind of like Lorelai and Luke from Gilmore Girls and I love Gilmore Girls so that should be interesting. The last book that I've been putting off I started this I think like three times but I just can't get past the first chapter and I don't know why because it should be right up my alley and I should love this but maybe it's just a book for the fall because I feel like this type of fantasy is just fall vibes you know then we have a book that I enjoyed with mixed reviews that would be The Guest by Emma Klein some people hated this book some people didn't get it and a lot of people like me loved it I think it was very weird the setting in the Hamptons I really enjoyed it's basically about this 22 year old Alex who has a boyfriend who's like 50 ish and she goes to the Hamptons with him but then he breaks up with her because she's a little bit deranged and weird and he is too because he's dating a 22 year old he wants her to go back to the city but she doesn't want to because she wants to like win him back and then she like schemes and does things and she basically stays in the Hamptons for a week without anybody really knowing without spoiling anything it just leaves you kind of hanging in there and you can kind of make up things that would happen afterwards but you can also just take it as it is and both ways aren't liked by a lot of people but I really enjoyed it and I think this is the perfect summer book because it is quite short it is in the Hamptons it's really like hot and in I think this is an awesome August, um, so it's it's great. I loved it. And lastly, we have my five star predictions. My first five star predictions is gonna be Akatar book two. I've heard from a lot of my friends that the second part is supposedly the best part, so I think that I'm gonna really like that because I rated Akatar part one five stars. Then we have Beach Tree by Emily Henry. I love Emily Henry's writing style, and this one, along with Happy Place, are supposedly her like best books. So I think this one's gonna be five star because all of her other books have been four or five stars for me. I have high hopes. And another one of my favorite authors, Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one is 
is not really a romance book but a little bit so it's not like her Emily Hugo, Daisy Jones and Six, that type of vibe, it's different but I love her writing style and I really like how she tells stories so I also have very high hopes for this one and I think it's gonna be a five star book. That's everything for this mid year book tag, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've read any of these books that I haven't read yet please let me know if you would recommend them, what your opinions were and I'll see you very soon in one of my next reading vlogs.